everyone, my name is Colin Murphy. I'm a product marketing manager at Microsoft and I'm here with Rohit to discuss uh, connectivity for Azure SQL database. So yes, welcome sir. Rohit. Um, so would you mind just telling us um, just you know the basic concepts of how you connect to um, Azure SQL database? Absolutely. Hello everyone, my name is Rohit. I'm a program manager in the SQL database team. And today with Colin, we're going to start and uh, take you through how you connect to Azure SQL database. Mm -hmm. So with that, let's get started. So first question, right? Let's understand a little bit about our architecture before we go to the nitty gritty of how you establish a connection. So as a customer, what you need to know is that we have a bunch of SQL gateways, which are our front end machines that take in incoming connections over the internet when you're connecting from on premises or outside Azure. Okay, so and these are just part of the PaaS service you get with yes. Azure SQL yes. database. Okay. And then we have a bunch of backend machines where your actual SQL database databases are hosted and you know your data lives there. Okay. So now let's take an example of I'm trying to connect to my server.database.windows.net. That's the usual format for our uh, database servers. And typically, if you do a NS lookup on this, it will resolve to this public IP address. The 104.42 IP is a public IP address, and you're going to be connecting to that on port 1433, which is where we are listening for connections on. Now, when you connect, one of the common things that happens is we basically, the SQL gateway forwards your connection on, so you have a sticky connection going through the gateway and connecting to the backend node. This okay. is called a proxy connection policy. So all the gateway is doing is it's a man in, in the middle passing on your connection to the backend. That's good because we're never exposing the actual IP of the Correct. SQL node. Correct. Correct. So okay. that, that is how you connect when you're connecting from outside of Azure. Now when you're connecting from inside of Azure, say from a VM, we do a slightly different way of connecting. So we connect to the SQL gateway and we get the actual location of your SQL database in the back end. So you'll see this 13.93 address, that's a private IP address. It is not something that users can connect to directly, like they don't know about this IP address. Okay. And then uh, to further randomize it, there's 11,000 to 11,999 uh, 11, port range, okay. well, which course. is, uh, <laughs> so SQL could be listening on any of those within that range. And that is where what happens is this is called the redirect method or redirection is the connection policy where we redirect you to that node. So you connect directly to the SQL database and the gateway doesn't come in the, into the picture ever again for that connection. Cool. Okay. So that that's sense. that's the basic architecture and you know you understand how to connect. Now let me take you through what happens when your connection actually makes it to the gateway. Okay. Right. And this is very, very basic, high level stuff, nothing special. And uh, you know, this is this has been around for ages, right? So you have a client and you have the yeah. gateway machine. First thing is the three-way handshake, standard TCP stuff. Yep. Client so, yeah. communicating to server, right? Interesting thing what happens next is you have a pre-login packet that the client sends. And interesting features here is we want you to as a best practice, use encryption, which is set by putting encrypt equals true in the connection string of your application. Mm -hmm. okay. Other part we want you to do as a best practice is trust server certificate equals false. So this forces the client to verify the server that uh, verify the certificate that you mm -hmm. get from the gateway node. So that way you won't have any uh, chance of spoofing or yeah. man in the middle attacks okay that makes perfect sense yeah so yeah. those are all best practices and any like developer connecting to SQL will find this on on our docs pages all over the place yeah in fact uh, we take it a step further if you go in the portal and uh, look at your SQL database and look at the connection string mm -hmm. these are put in there oh these are the defaults yes excellent. so we put them okay, in there excellent. to make sure that you are protected okay right and then uh, from here on, the pre-login response is again part of the TDS protocol. And then you have this TLS handshake, which is a long-winded way of saying, getting a secure channel between the client and the server. Okay. So essentially at the end of this process, you are secure from the protocol perspective. 
and encrypted. then yeah yeah then starts the actual login packet which is called you'll see it as login 7 packet in if you do wireshark or something like that and then based on what you are using if you're you are connecting to us from the proxy mode we'll you'll just get an acknowledgement back otherwise you'll get what is called as a redirect token which is a fancy way of saying we will tell you the private ip address that mm -hmm. you're going to connect to wow there's a lot of handshaking going backwards and forwards yes. there um is that, is that a long process or no it's a matter of milliseconds oh okay so that's yeah we keep it fast even and we keep it secure okay <laughs> that's good fast and secure yeah so next, uh, now that we know about the architecture and we know about uh, the basics of connectivity, let's talk about who can connect, right? So you want to put some controls about how do you actually uh, filter who can connect to your SQL, Azure SQL database. So this is, and I'll show this in the demo, this is basically the firewall blade for mm -hmm. in the Azure portal. So the first thing you'll notice here is this section up top that says allow access to Azure services on or off. So this is a very broad category of permission that you're giving here, which mm -hmm. is basically saying, can any other service that's running within Azure, say like a web app or uh, another Azure VM, can it connect to your SQL database server or no. not? And that's anywhere in Azure, or is yes. it set by a, a region or a zone or data center, it's just... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Basically what this does is when you're running services in Azure, each uh, region or data center has a set of fixed IP addresses. Mm -hmm. So we basically, this is a, a rule that says anything that's coming to me from, from an IP Azure, address, yeah. Yeah. a trusted data center, yes. is so I'm, I'm going to accept. Allow it. Gotcha. Now, of course, people have reservations against this because this is a little bit of a broader scope. Mm -hmm. But uh, in some scenarios, you need to do this. Yeah. For example, web app is one example. But gradually, there we are coming up with offerings to where you'll be able to put this at off and come up. Uh, and I'm going to show you different ways in which... Oh, do it by a service type or something, yes. like a web app or something. Yes. And then just to clarify, this is when you say anything in uh, any service in Azure, it's in, within your own subscription, of course. Yes. Just to, yes. Just to clarify that for people there. <laughs> yeah. So next level of control that we offer is what's uh, IP-based firewall. Mm -hmm. So this is typically uh, when you provision a, a Azure a SQL database server, mm -hmm. the default list here is empty. So you nobody can connect to it by using an IP address unless they are in this list. Gotcha. So the first thing you need to do is when you uh, go to the portal, it will show you the IP address that you're coming from. So if I'm coming from my home IP, that's where it will show up in this client IP address section. And mm -hmm. I need to whitelist that in yeah. order for me to be able to connect using Management Studio, for example. Okay. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. We yeah. deny all by default. Exactly. Okay. And now we have a third interesting way of connecting, which is called VNet firewall rules. And that's pretty much saying allow all Azure VMs inside of a VNet to connect to my SQL database. Mm. Now, there might be situations where this is useful. Say you have a legacy app or you have, say, reporting services that's running in a VM mm -hmm. and you want to connect to SQL database. This is a granular way of doing that to allow only a specific set of VMs that are within a subnet to connect to SQL database. Okay. So these are the three ways in which we kind of control who connects to SQL database today. Yeah, I can see that being very useful for like moving legacy applications. Absolutely. We've got all those VMs running all within the, the one VNet, yeah. Yes. So next I'll take you through details of each one. So let's look at how the IP-based firewall works. So assume we have a server with a couple of databases, DB1 and DB2. And here's an incoming connection. And of course, the incoming connection could be proxy or redirect, doesn't matter at this point. The assumption is you've gotten past the gateway and you're actually coming at the SQL engine level. The first thing that we are going to do is we're going to check against the database level firewall. So this is stored in the master database in sys.database firewall rules. It's a DMB. Mm -hmm. And all it contains is a range of IP addresses that are allowed. So if you're in here, then by default, you get a database scoped access to whichever uh, database you want to connect. 
if you are not in the database level firewall rules, then next check happens is at the server level, which is a slightly different DMV called sys.firewall rules, and it's again in the master database. And if you have access here, then of course you have access at the server level. So you can, once you are connected, you can in Management Studio drop down, choose both DB1 and DB2. Okay, so if I just if I was configuring using SSMS to configure my Azure SQL database, uh, I, if I set a firewall rule in the in the server level, it would just give me access to everything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, so which would probably be good for dev test, but yes. not in best practices. Yes. What you want to do? <laughs> and that's a great question, Colin, because uh, one of the things that uh, why why do we have these two levels is because. In production, you want if you want to use what's called as a contained user, mm -hmm. then the the best practice is contained user only allows you say I set up a contained user for DB one. The whole idea of contained user being I cannot access DB two, and in combination with the database firewall rules, I can also allow uh, restrict the IP address from where users can log in. So essentially. The database level firewall is a useful feature for dev test and you know for m managing the scope of uh, where people can connect from. Okay. Right. Um, so uh, again, just help me out here. Yeah. Uh, because you explained quite a few details. So on the um, the firewall rules, these are inside the SQL Server, and there's obviously been what we covered earlier on was the firewall rules for the uh, the network, the VNet. Uh, yeah, so those are two distinct concepts. Yeah. So in the previous slide, I showed you there's an IP address based firewall. Mm -hmm. That is what this is. And the the place where they are stored is inside of master database within your SQL server. Gotcha. And they are exposed via the portal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, of course, if you don't meet any of these criteria, then your connection will be rejected, which is what we spoke about. Now let's look at the new interesting part here, which is the VNet firewall rules. So, and I'll let me set up the scenario for you. So, let's assume you have a virtual machine that's running, say, your legacy app on IIS or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the virtual mm -hmm. machine typically has you can set up a, a what's called as a public IP address for it, which is the 40.112 address, or you and you can also have a private IP address, which comes from a particular subnet yep. so best practice is always make sure that your private ips are coming from subnets helps in network segmentation and that's a networking best practice right? mm -hmm. but i'll show you how we how it helps yeah. us. and you typically always set those things up or get a network um uh, it yes. pro to set those up before you go to a deployment absolutely. production yeah it's you want to make sure you've got uh, enough ip ranges. yes absolutely it's a good point that you bring up is we definitely want separation of duties here is it's always good to plan your network ahead of time so you don't run out of IP addresses and then you certainly don't want a DBA messing around with uh, you know setting these up and getting the size wrong or because each of these are uh, it's easy to mm, uh, miss things in here yeah and once they're set once you set those ranges and started installing things it's you can't go backwards yeah. correct yeah. correct so this is the basic setup. I have a VM. It has a public IP address and a private IP address. So let me take you through option number one, which is how do I connect to SQL database using the public, or we typically call this the snatted IP address. Option number one is let's start from the VM side. Mm -hmm. And we can define what is called as an NSG rule, which basically yeah. says, I'm going to allow outbound traffic. NSG network security network group. Security group okay. Which is on uh, uh, exists on the VM uh, uh, lay on the virtual machine, and it allows you to define inbound and outbound rules. So here we'll define an outbound rule to connect to SQL database, and the way we'll do that is we'll say I need to connect to 1433 because that's my initial. Remember, initially you need to connect to the gateway, which is listening on port 1433. And then I need the 11,000 through 11,999 range because I'm going to use redirection. And then TCP is my protocol. My IP address is the 40112 address. And way over on the right, the most interesting piece. I'm saying 
let this virtual machine connect to everything in sql.westus so that is again another mm -hmm. networking concept called a service tag so what that means is i want to connect to sql database i know my database is in west us allow me just whitelist traffic to the west us region oh that's really good so and you could you know just limit use that as a rule to just just the users there to help with uh, um, just your latency and traffic yes i mean a, a bottom line here is this is a, a way of enabling the connectivity from the network side. So mm -hmm. typically your network admin would do this and it just makes management easier for them because when you say SQL.WestUS, you don't have to whitelist individual IP yeah, addresses, IPs, yeah. right? So it allows you to connect to anything in any SQL database within the WestUS yeah. region. Now, this also incurs an additional overhead in the sense that once you are done with the network setting, you need to come on the SQL database side. And again, remember our IP address yep. firewall, right? So you need to add the IP address here. So this is a two-step process. Mm -hmm. And the downsides of this are, one is you have to manage the IP address. So for example, anytime if you change the public IP address for the VM, immediately this connectivity will be broken because SQL won't recognize that IP address. Yeah, because it's the not whitelisted anymore. Yes. Correct. And the other uh, thing about this that uh, some customers may not like is the service tag is still pretty wide open. It says, allow me to connect to any SQL database in the West US region. Okay. But of course, there are improvements coming on the network side that will allow you to restrict that to a specific resource. But those are in progress at the moment. Okay. But this is what we have. So now let's flip the direction from which we are coming here. And you saw how we set up from the VM side to SQL DB. The VNet firewall rule is something that you set up from the SQL database side like this to say, allow me to connect from my SQL database to a particular subnet. So the beauty of it is you, you do not need to uh, whitelist any IP addresses or do anything like that. All you are saying is opening a path between your SQL database and a particular subnet. And you're using the private IP address. So there's, that's even added benefit that everything uh, like everything is going through the Azure backbone network wise. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, other advantage of this is no whitelisting required. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, cool. So um, thank you. Thank you. For it. That's, that's a really good explanation of the connectivity to Azure SQL database. A um, couple of other quick questions. For this is um, is it just for Azure SQL database, like all of them, the, the different deployment options? Um, I think we have a single elastic pools managed instance. Absolutely. Is it for all of them, uh, the yes. connectivity options you so explained? So when we talk about Azure SQL database today, mm -hmm. uh, whether you look at a single uh, SQL databases, elastic pools, mm -hmm. data warehouse, and even the open source databases, mm -hmm. we share a common control plane, which, mean, which means to say the, the SQL gateway that you saw, that component is common. So this connectivity applies to all of our mm -hmm. offerings that are under the Azure SQL database umbrella. Okay, oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much everyone for tuning in and uh, give us a like if you like this type of uh, content and uh, subscribe to us and we'll see you later on. Thank you. Mm -hmm.